Hello everyone and welcome to episode 33 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by Philomen from rural Brittany in France. In this inspiring episode we discuss her passion for cultivating a more mindful, creative, healthier and sustainable lifestyle. She shares how her journey has been inspired by her love of creativity, the varied places she has called home and how a return to her rural roots in France created the space for her story to evolve. She shares her insights on embracing the seasons to shape our lives and behaviour, creating rituals and awareness for the opportunities and wisdom they each bring, including her love of slowing down and cosying up in winter beside the fire to knit with a cup of spiced chai tea. Our conversation meanders through a shared vision for supporting women, our communities and ultimately our society to consider ways of growing in a new direction and redefining our current paradigm. From looking at where we source our food to the incredible wisdom the journey of homeschooling her children has given her, we consider the role of education and the space for co-creation that becomes available when we give value to everyone's voices. Philemon shares the gentle but important reminder that it's okay. That we don't have to be perfect, we don't have to do everything, and that in each small step we take, the seeds of the next step can germinate if we have the courage to slow down and be patient with ourselves and others. Well, welcome, Philomene, and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Nurture by Nature podcast. Um, I'm really excited for this conversation because I think we have so much in common. But to just get us started, I always like to ask all my guests just to share a little bit about their nature story and really what that means to them, what nature's perhaps meant to them through their life um, from childhood or, or more, more recently. So um, if you've got anything you'd like to share to get us started, that would be lovely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. When I found out about you, I was like, oh, wow, we, we resonate. Like, it seems like we have a lot in common and we could be friends in real life. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to get to know you better and, and be on your podcast, obviously. Um, as for my nature story, it's a bit of a funny one, actually. Um, I grew up in the countryside, so I was like living in the middle of nowhere, um, having very little neighbors, um, yeah. not spending a lot of time with um, other kids, as in like my neighbors for sure. Uh, animals, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that was my first part of life. And I have to say that around teenagehood, um, I found that very difficult. Okay. And I was craving for the city life and like, you know, dreading really <laughs> my life in the countryside. Um, so when I was 18, I left and I went to live in bigger cities. Um, so that led me to like lots of different places. England, actually, I lived oh. in Plymouth. That is not that big, but still <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Bristol and then I lived in London as well oh, for wow, two years. Okay. Um, so yeah, like bigger cities and then Paris and then I moved to California, um, again in the city in Berkeley. So for the next, I don't know, like 10, 15 years, I lived in cities and I was happy like that. I was, you know, kind of not having to drive, just taking the metro and everything. And that was perfect for me. And then eventually it hit back. I was really um craving nature and I yeah. I really missed it um I'm not sure how that happened I think having kids probably played a role like to see them living in you know a urban environment um I was growing in grass and and yeah. you know yeah. um, being outside all the time and um that probably played a role and also I really wanted to have a yard to grow some vegetables. And I had some raised beds um, in the house in the city that I was living in California, but um, it felt very restrictive. Like I didn't have much space. I felt like always, you know, trying to compromise on the space and everything. 
Um, so when we decided to move back to France, one of my goal was to really have like a big yard. And I remember my parents were like, what? You want to live in the countryside? Like, really? You've been so mean to us. Well, you You've know, been that running choice. away for all these years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I was just like, yeah, I think so. And originally we wanted like a small yard. Yeah. And um, when we visited houses, it's funny because I was pulled towards those houses, like which were like, and um, with a huge piece of land with them, and yeah. and eventually we bought this house. Um, that yeah, it's a renovated farm, and it has like a huge land with it. Oh, and oh wow! And I'm in the middle of, of nowhere like a lot worse than my parents actually you know my parents <laughs> had some people living across I don't I have like my first neighbor is about half a kilometer away oh, from me oh wow oh wow okay <laughs> so yeah no I think now I'm you know really into nature um my um closest neighbors are probably squirrels badgers oh, foxes beautiful oh um, it sounds it sounds amazing I'm like I can just picture it all it's amazing I think um well it's quite important to you and I, I know a lot of people that I know that when they do have children of their own it, it is a time that you sort of stop and reflect and you think about you know what what you want for them to experience in their childhood and also I guess you you have more awareness of what the future will unfold for them and it does draw you into sort of thinking like you said about growing food and and just the way of life that that, that you're going to have and they're going to experience doesn't it yeah it's it's um I think when they were li like tiny tiny um like toddlers um, whatever was around me could have been worked around. I could, you know, we were going in the forest and picking up pieces of wood and bringing them back home. But then, yeah, I don't know. I was craving this kind of freedom of just being able to just step outside your house and you're in there and then they don't necessarily have the parents around them. They can experience nature by themselves and have, you know, their own life with that, like, I think I had that and it felt great because I had yeah. really that sense of, you know, being able to do my own experiences and push my limits and discover things for myself. And um, so, yeah, it's um, it's definitely something that I don't know. I didn't see it coming for sure. But <laughs> yeah, when when we arrived here, um, so my kids were by that time um, three and six. Oh, wow. And and so six is already quite growing up in a way um mm -hmm. but it's yeah it made such a difference in their behavior and how comfortable they were and you know how appreciative they were um with being outside and just having their own time and being free oh wow so did you did you move from california <laughs> to to where you are now in france that was the yes. transition for them oh wow okay yeah. so wow quite a, <laughs> like cultural and and the change from the city to the the rural environment that was quite radical i yeah. have to say <laughs> um we were living in a so we, berkeley is not like the like warmest place of california um but nevertheless it was you know that cold either not that rainy either yeah. um so when we moved back here we had that first winter and that was tough <laughs> yeah. that was that was so tough like getting back to the reality of Brittany and the rain and mm. the dampness yeah. um that really get, gets into your bone and all of that um yeah, yeah that, and the lack of light yes yeah. that's the main difference I think um California has so many days of light during yeah. the, the year and Brittany not so much <laughs> yeah it's um it is really hard at, I think sort of um I mean now the the days are starting to get a bit longer and we're getting a bit more daylight we've got a, a beautiful sunny day here and it does just change your mu mood completely doesn't it to have have that daylight yeah. but I mean I've I've got horses and one of the things that I've found that really helps me through those those winter days is actually 
because I have horses, I go outside. And I think when you have that need to be outside in all weathers, you do at least experience a bit of light and sunlight on your skin. And because it can be quite easy to just sort of hibernate, can't it, through the winter otherwise? Yeah, I, well, I have to admit, I am a little guilty on that. Um, I do cultivate that hibernation during yeah. winter. <laughs> um, I like knitting, I like um, being by the fire and, you know, sipping tea, eating yeah. cookies, like inside. I like all the coziness that comes with winter. But I also have um, chickens <laughs> that yeah. do need to be fed. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, so that gets me outside and yeah. and also, you know, a bit of gardening during the winter we still have to look after things yeah um so yeah it's a good incentive to get out but I think that's beautiful because that's part of what what you're passionate about is basically sort of this sort of slower more mindful living and I think you know winter is a wonderful opportunity for that for us isn't it and it's something that as a culture we tend not to really embrace as much as we could do um absolutely yeah but it sounds like you you embrace it all year round but this time of year is is particularly a good time for people to to kind of try it out yeah it's um so it didn't come really um instantly like we moved here and i know the first couple of winter were tricky it was difficult because of the weather it was difficult because we didn't have that kind of rhythm or and then yeah. slowly um I was trying to, you know, kind of go with the season and, you know, like diff live differently. So food was like the first thing because we were trying to eat local and everything. Yeah. Um, so our food was really impacted by seasons. Um, yeah. And then the rest kind of followed after a while. I was like, why resisting and trying to do everything, you know, we were doing um, during the summer when it's not the same season. We don't have the same thing around and like if you look at animals they do slow down during the winter they do you know stay quiet and cozy and warmed up and bundled up so why not yeah. be inspired and do the same yeah. so we started to yeah I think probably um put some kind of rituals things that we only do during winter and things that we are very looking forward when you know autumn comes and we're like Ooh, yeah it's nice <laughs> to do some chai tea and you know yeah. we don't do that during the summer so it's something to look forward and I think a lot of us are conditioned to think oh no it's autumn again or it's winter again uh it's gonna be dreadful whereas if you have something to look forward it makes the experience very different and you enjoy it yeah I th I think that's so true and I, it was interesting what you said about food I was watching a program in the UK that we have called um winter watch the other day and they were actually talking about birds and how bird like quite a few bird species change what they eat like from summer to winter so in the spring and summer they may be predominantly eating insects and yeah. come the winter they change to eating more of like berries, berries and, yeah. and the things and like seed heads and things that they can find and forage and it was interesting that you, you've literally just said that about about your own diet when you when you focused on like trying to eat more locally that actually you have to adapt and your diet has to change through the seasons and I mean it's, do you, you grow your own food as well don't you um I do. I do some of it. Um, the main uh, goal when we moved here was to be self-sufficient. So um, so now it's been like six years, seven years we're here. Um, let's be honest, we're not self-sufficient <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. We've had some very bad years, um, some really good ones. Um, but um, we rely a lot on the local farm. We have a farm which is about three kilometers away from us. And um, they really have the same value as us like growing um, their own um, traditional crops and you know being very mindful with animals and everything so it aligns so I'm happy and comfortable to eat whatever yeah. they produce and it's a good relief as well to know that if you have a bad year and because you've got mildew on all your tomato plants then <laughs> you still have something to eat during the winter yeah I think well this is a thing isn't it I think um <clears throat> Like there's there's almost a lot of pressure on on people who want to to sort of try harder for the environment that they have you know the 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 goal is self sufficiency but actually it's very hard to be self sufficient and perhaps if we if we really are honest and we look back sort of ancestrally 
people weren't, you know, they weren't these little islands, like they were in community and you, you know, you would have been cooperating with, with your neighbors. And, you know, if, if a crop failed for you, the hopefully their crop didn't. And likewise, you might have sort of grown complementary things. And so I think there is, there is grace in that as well, isn't there? Of like saying, do you know what? It's okay. Like it's, it's important to try and do what you can, but actually, you know, finding local suppliers and producers and supporting them is can be just as good as as trying to do it all yourself absolutely i think i think it was one of my biggest aha moment and it didn't take some time for me to get there but i moved here i was thinking okay i'm gonna do it all and i really yeah. tried to do it all yeah. um i was all over the place doing everything being so busy yeah. And then and then eventually, yes, I did find a kind of network, a community of people that were aligned to my values and I could count on. And that really came to place when we had COVID because um, I had a lot of time to grow my food then, but um, I didn't want to go to you know cities and places like that. And all my um, small um, producers around me, they all came together and like within um, a five kilometers um, kind of radius, we had everything we needed. And oh, I was wow. thinking, okay, well, no, this is yeah. fine. Anything can happen in the world. We have that community and we can, yeah. you know, just help each other and be there. And that's, that's enough. That's all we need. Yeah, no, that's, it's beautiful. And I think <laughs> there's so much um, power in that as well, isn't there? Of realizing that you don't have to do everything. And I think there is this like, I don't know, if it's I don't know if it's a belief in society or, you know, that you sort of have to prove yourself. And unless you're like, you know, can be completely independent, you're somehow sort of failing at some level. And actually you miss out on this whole like beautiful, well, a word that we often use is reciprocity, which is like this whole idea of like the circle of like connection and giving and receiving. And, and that's, that's basically what you're saying by like looking around your local area and um, finding local suppliers, you can, you can enter into this beautiful cycle that yeah. can be more fulfilling than, than trying was, to burn yeah. yourself out, trying to do it all yourself. Yeah. So yeah. I was, um, when we moved to France, I, I, didn't have um I used to be freelance and I stopped because I was homeschooling the kids and they were tiny and I wanted to be fully dedicated to that and I think that was part of the pressure I was feeling I was feeling like oh yeah you're not yeah. working so you need to do all the rest like yeah. you need to you know handle everything and you're right we don't and it's just so much pressure and once you kind of think okay I can take that because I enjoy doing it but the rest, there might be someone else that enjoys doing it better than me. And yeah. this is okay. And we can, you know, either trade or, or, you know, buy from them or, you know, just help each other. It's, it's fine. We can rely on someone else's or we can try doing something for once. And, you know, the following year, we don't have the energy to do it and find someone else to do it. It's it's okay. It should be like that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, it's, I mean, it's refreshing and it's lovely. I love it. I, I love speaking to you and hearing you say, like, do you know what? It's okay. It's okay to not do everything. Like, to just to find the things that you can do, find the things that you enjoy, find the things that you're good at. And, you know, and then find someone else that's good at some, at some of the things that you don't have time for or you're not so good at. And, you know, that's, it's just the beauty of community isn't it it's the beauty of community and it's like what I feel like since COVID I think we have this sort of craving to kind of come home to almost is this sense of really a community that works together and functions together which of course is what we see in nature as well we see these communities in the natural world around us you know the trees and all the um fungi and things the amazing systems mm. that they that they have to work together to harvest and share nutrients and it's like that's what we need to embrace in in ourselves and our own communities so that we all thrive I think so I think so where I live you can you can definitely see that in the different communities like uh yeah in the different towns around me you can see different um, groups of people that get together and they do get a system going that works and is local and relies only on that circle of people and that works great i 
don't know if it's as true in cities or like yeah. you know I I never felt that when I lived in Berkeley or in Paris for sure like that was completely something I don't know I I would have found it like very weird like um although you could find um you know CSA like um just places to buy food from and things like yeah. that you had no contact with the person it was delivered in a shop or you know that's true it is it is yeah a a lot harder in in cities I think like there is nature everywhere but I think there is just it it's remote it's just you're you're one step removed aren't you from it like you you can still find um good produce and healthy food but you have to perhaps go through like a supplier rather than direct to the producer Yeah. And you do you do need to well I, I think it's true in in, in the rural um uh, countryside as well, but uh, you do need to look for it. Yeah. Whereas um in here I guess once you find one supplier then they're probably gonna put you in touch with the other one and, and all of that. Um but it's doable, it's still doable in, in the city. Um it's just a different journey. Yeah. Yeah, I think um I mean I'd even go so far to say is I mean I, I'm in a relatively rural area of the UK and I think even here we aren't perhaps as good at it as I, I, I know I've seen on like the the European continent. It's it seems like the rural areas there still have managed to sort of hold on to those more sort of ancestral ties I guess um and way of life whereas here it, it has moved a little bit away so but there are like you say it, it is just what like you have to go and look for it and it is there but it's not necessarily obvious Yeah. immediately And and I think um well where I live, I don't think it's like it it kind of remains through the years. I think we're putting it back now. okay like the new the, so maybe I'm not the newest generation, but uh, the the people the parents the parents of today they well in here anyway, they know something is like things are changing and we need to. construct a different um, society so um, there are a lot of initiatives that are you know growing now it's not so much things that are from are still remaining from the past it's like Okay. a, um, really a big desire to grow the society differently and I think it's very encouraging Yeah, I was just going to say that's really that is really encouraging because it's like that gives everyone anyone anywhere, you know, the hope that actually you can it is possible to like start to to build these sort of movements and programs and initiatives and um and that they do work to serve serve everyone. Well, that's my um, biggest wish. <laughs> I really want um, us to kind of change things and and yeah, like create a new a new way of living and see that it doesn't have to rely on what we believe right now, um, what we think is the right thing for the society and everything. I think we can construct things in a different way and kind of you know be happy with less and with more natural Yeah. things and. Yeah, it's I think um it's that sort of simpler mindset, isn't it? Of um I mean we are we are given so much sort of stimuli in society through the media of like you need this and you should have this and you know to your your success and wealth and status is all tied up with sort of these material things. And I think Well, certainly in my world, like there's more and more people are coming back to this kind of mindset that you, that you have of just like simplifying life a little bit more and and asking perhaps it perhaps it's even as simple as just asking why like why am I why do I need that like why <laughs> why why Yeah. <laughs> it's like do Would it? I really Yeah. yeah <laughs> Is it really going to make a difference? Is it Yeah. going to change? Like, yeah, it's so, but it takes time. It's kind of a process, right? You have to go through to, well, it's like anything. You don't go from that point to that point, like straight away. You just go one step at a time and then you plan Yeah. to sit for the next thing. And, and I, I do, I do think that kids need to also grow in a different way so that it's easier for them so they don't have to unlearn whatever Yeah, you know yeah. is already in them um as we do because 
I grew up in a, you know, a regular family buying a lot of things and I'm pretty sure it got worse in like in the, you know, um, beginning of the 21st century yeah. like we yeah, stopped to buy like more the 90s more. the 2000s yeah. yeah yeah and and yeah I do think that maybe we can do a bit things a bit different with our kids and like yeah. teach them those strong values that actually my grandparents had already you know yeah. my grandparents were very um, already like thinking about what they were buying and like being mindful about what they were using and not consuming so much. So it's not that far. And, you know, yeah. maybe we could go back to those strong values and infuse them already. And, and I'm sure there will be some rebellious time in yeah. childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, you, you, were, you were talking there and I was thinking back to my childhood and I was thinking about like a lot of it, I think is the technology, um, that is that sort of came to the fore in the like 90s and 2000s and it's like I think back to my childhood and it's like we didn't have mobile phones and you know mm-hmm. the, the tv had maybe like I think well originally four channels on, on it and then we were very excited when we got a fifth channel and you know it was it was it was just simpler times and and I mean I'm only 40 so it's like you know it's it's in quite a short window that it has changed and there are better and don't get me wrong there's obvious benefits for technology yeah. like you and me sitting here you're in France and I'm here and we're, we're able to meet and communicate and this podcast will go out to people all around the world and absolutely you know yeah. that it is it is br- brilliant but with it there has come this just massive very quick change and I think it I think we've sort of everyone kind of got swept along and now we're like oh hang on a minute <laughs> like, like how do we find actually balance in this this new sort of new world really that we we've got compared to when we grew up even and and, and certainly very different to our parents very different to our grandparents um and it, yeah it's about using the wisdom of, of previous generations but sort of actually adapting it isn't it like yeah. you were saying and and moving forward for everyone. I think there's there's been a spiral. Like we started to get all of those new things, technology and everything, and we got swept in there and just like it had to be all of it. Yeah. We couldn't just take one part. And I've been I've been part of that, you know, yeah. no no question about that. Um so yeah, and then and then you just keep on building on that and wanting more, and it's just it's just no, it's how it's created, it's how we've designed this world. It's yeah. um, the the difficulty is at some point to kind of open your eyes and think, yeah, well, do does it need to be this way? Can I step back and you know maybe grab that, but not so much that, and maybe you know be content with what I have already and yeah. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a tricky thing, and and again, not from one point to you know that end point very quickly. It takes it's a process, and it's a it's important to be patient with ourselves and not be frustrated and and be kind as well yeah. to ourselves. Yeah, and kind to others as well. And everyone's going to have a slightly different interpretation of it. And yeah, I, th- I had a lovely guest um, a few months ago, and she was like, "We need to get away from this idea that there's one solution. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, there's there's not one solution. Like there there needs to be lots of different ways, and all of those different ways coming together are going to lead to sort of towards the same outcome, but." people will have different ways of doing it and yeah. that's okay. And we need to respect that and and not be judgmental that their way is a little bit different to our way. And, and it's a journey, all. right? And we all have our own journey and it's going to be a different one and respect that it's all a different one and yeah. things are going to come at a different pace. And learn from each other as well. I think that's the other thing is like, you know, when you're judging someone, you you shut yourself off from the wisdom that they could perhaps share with you. Um, so that's a, a big thing for me is just to try and like have more openness to actually listen to other people, how they're doing it and their, you know, their opinions, their experiences, their wisdom and and what we can can learn as a collective and you know some things you'll take away and think oh yeah that'd be brilliant and other things you'll go oh no that does it doesn't just doesn't really sit with me and my lifestyle at the moment and yeah um and that's okay yeah and we all have a different story um I, I can't remember in which book I read that but I read once that if you were in in his shoes at that time 
um, you would probably have done the same. With this yeah. history, you know, that yeah. old thing, you, you would have done probably the same. And that kind of brings a lot of perspective, right? It's kind yeah. of, yeah, well, actually, it's true. I have my journey. I have met those people. I have done these experiences. But if I had had a completely different life, then what would tell me I wouldn't have taken those choices? Yeah. Yeah. And and equally, like, you know, having, you know, grace with yourself and, you know, not judging yourself too harshly, looking back on your own life and being like, well, as I sit now, I would have, you know, I could have done stuff differently in the past. But at the time I was doing the best I could. And, you know, you yeah. have to you have to have that like, you know, actually it doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't no. go back and change what you've done, but you can move forward with the wisdom that you've gained from it and, and do things better and differently as you move forward. I think it's probably um, counterproductive as well to be harsh to yourself. And, but mm. I, you know what, I, I truly believe that that might be where we actually the worst it's with ourself we probably yeah. judge ourselves all the time and probably go like ah, I didn't do that I feel guilty for it I yeah you know and and it doesn't help it's not going to take it's not going to help us take like a good action afterwards it's not going to help us you know move forward or and um I think we're, we'll just circle back slightly because you, you've mentioned your children quite a few times and I know this is a big part of your life and and you've homeschooled them and um is it I mean it was that was that um something that you wanted to do like did you sort of when you had children you thought I'm going to homeschool them or was it it's something that just evolved over time so it's actually quite funny because no, I never imagined myself um, homeschooling mom. To be honest, I didn't even really know it existed or I never really paid attention to that. Um, it wasn't something I felt like, um, you know, like I was going to do. Yeah. Um, I was kind of thinking they would go to school. Like I, I'd never thought about that. And then I had kids and we moved to um, California when my eldest was nine months old. And then, yeah, we arrived there. Um, and so in, in here, the kindergarten is like, you know, it's not something you question. It's something like you, you put your kids in kindergarten and then, um, and then they go to primary school and everything. You follow the system. We arrived there and uh, kindergarten wasn't so much mainstream. You had the option. You could think about it. And I was thinking, okay, well, you know, I'm happy to keep my child with me longer and not put him in daycare. And then um, my eldest was actually very strong about the idea of not going to school anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, and and when we arrived in the US, I was trying to make friends and meet people. And that's that can be tricky if you're an adult. It's not so difficult when you're a student, but when you're an yeah. adult, it can be tricky. Yeah. So I joined a group of um, I think it was about attachment parenting at the time. And a lot of them were very strong about the idea that, you know, they were gonna homeschool the kids or at least, you know, uh, once they were young children. So I was like, okay, well, that's an option. Discover discovering yeah. that option, yeah. and yeah. and that's how it happened. Really, we we fell into it rather than <laughs> you know looked for it. And um, and yeah, after that, my kids were just so happy doing that. They were like, no, we're not going to school. Um, we we're happy this way. We can meet with friends. We can do a lot of activities outside home, and that's good for us. And can play so much. Um, when we came back to France, um, we had to kind of reassess that, you know, wonder whether we wanted to carry on or not. And um, and things are a lot different in terms of regulations and how you can do it and, and all of that. Um, but, yeah, my kids were both going like, no, you know. So <laughs> I had a second child in, in the US, by the way. Um, and yeah. then we came back. It was three and um, the other one six as I mentioned earlier. And yeah, they were like, no, we're happy like that. Why change, you know, and we don't lose that country so we can keep on living how we do. And, you know, it's not going to be so much of a change. So we carried on like that. And 
And, you know, we reassess the situation pretty much every year, thinking, yeah. okay, should we do, should we yeah. carry on or should we, you know, change things? And so far, they both are very strong about, you know, keeping their very free childhood in terms of how much activities they do and how much play they have. And yeah, I think and it that's, works. that's the beauty of, I mean, I, I, I have got friends that homeschool their children and I'm like, oh, I wish I was homeschooled. <laughs> it's like because it's I you do you do have all of this amazing time where you can really look to other interests. Um I don't want to say outside the classroom because the beauty of homeschooling is like your classroom's everywhere and you're always learning, Absolutely, isn't it? That's yeah. that's really the ethos of it is in every activity and in every moment you you have an opportunity to learn and and all of that skills and all of the wisdom is valuable. Whereas sort of in the mainstream, you know, going to school system of education, it's it's much more like, you no, know, you have to, you know, now you're in English class and that's where you learn English and now you're yeah. in maths class and that's where you learn maths and you know that it doesn't spill out <laughs> no, into, it's, into yeah. the world around you. And um, I think, well, I mean, I'm not an expert. I've, I've never homeschooled anyone. <laughs> but, so if you want, if you want to talk a bit more about that, but that that's my impression of well, it. Well, I wasn't an expert either. I <laughs> had never considered on teaching anyone. Or oh, at some point I was considering being an English teacher and then I came back living in France. And I was like, nah, I don't think I could cope with that. Like, yeah. All those people not speaking English, it's going to be too difficult for me. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to do that, I, I think, you know, well, probably not a good idea to be an English teacher because the old point is to teach um, yeah. others. Um, <laughs> but it's a very different approach when you're homeschool. As you said, it's not so much the, you know, I don't I don't go to my kids like saying, OK, I know that and I'm going to pass it on to you. This is not how it happens. We yeah. discover things, we grow, we learn together, we um, explore some subjects. So they're going to have a, my kids are very like um, passion kids like they love um to discover and go very deep in one subject and then um, once they've kind of covered it covered it we move on to something else so we really um use those subjects to you know as much as we can explore all of it um go into different areas and and it's um yeah i think it makes it like a lot more passionate and we like with a lot of I don't know with love it feels like it's not really um we don't have to do it it's not yeah. something that is like okay now we need to do that because this yeah. is in the program or anything it's not like that so for example for history and and geography um we kind of learn it from stories from books from podcasts and it's very um dynamic and it feels like it's actually real it's like you know, it's like when your grandparents tell you a story about something that happened to them in the in the past, then it feels, you know, you're interested because it's something that yeah. happened and it feels alive and it's very dynamic. Well, it's the same for us. We discover from those stories like that and then it makes it like real and it sticks. You know, yeah. you remember it a lot better when it's learned like that and it yeah. has like a, a very interesting story to it rather than if you read it in a paragraph in a very cold book that has no, you know, kind of um, feelings to it or it's not really passionate. Or... Yeah, it's just, I think um, I, was, I was just <laughs> listening to you talking and I was thinking, it's kind of how I've learned, like when I've left school, like actually, like, I mean, I, I love, I love learning. I like, I've always got books and, you know, like a lot of the things I've learned about um, herbs and plants and things have, have been in that sort of way. Like, you you know, you're out in the, in the countryside and you spot something and you're like, oh, I don't know what that is. And mm. you maybe, you know, you perhaps take a photograph or, you know, you know and then you go back and you, you try and look it up if you've got books that you reference or you you know, look online and then you're like oh that's interesting and then you might maybe like oh I want to learn more about like has it got any yeah. healing properties and you know and it sort of spirals isn't it and then it's like oh I found like there was this mythology and like you know these ancient stories where it was mentioned and and it just it just is I don't know it's like well I think you say on your website it's like creative isn't it and it's intuitive and it's just yeah. like spontaneous as well and and yeah and it's it's just completely different. It's like I, I think of 
like my time at school and I I did I mean I I did quite well at school it's not like I I struggled um I, I didn't really enjoy the environment of school but like the learning I was I was quite proficient at yeah but it was dry it wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't alive and I think that's what it feels like to me is like it feels like learning the way that you were just expressing is like alive it's this you know a whole like sort of almost like an organism that like is living and breathing and and changing and and you're experiencing it rather than you know that, like this sort of prescribed straight path that you must just tick boxes and, and yeah. learn to answer questions yeah absolutely I think I think it's alive it's it's a story I think that's a big difference it, you have a story it sticks to you and you you will um you know come back to it and remember it because it's attached to your own story and some emotions that yeah. you've developed whilst learning it and so I did a few courses on on herbs and um how to use plants and and herbal medicine and everything because I'm very passionate about that but yeah it's it's the same I I don't know um if I could have learned it in a school environment as well because like right now it's 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 like you were saying like I go outside I see some achelia and I'm like ooh, like look at that and what is it and then I found so when we moved here I actually started to google every picture that I was taking to find out the name of the plants and and the beauty of it, like all of those weeds that we qualify as weeds, they actually have tons of medicinal properties. So yeah. um, I was finding so much information. And, and yeah, and, and you know, I actually um, pass that to my kids as well, like all the wisdom about plants, because I was discovering that um, and they were tiny. Um, so I was taking courses and, you know, kind of discovering all of that outside and they were with me off often because you know they have homeschool so yeah. I have them with me quite often and um and they were curious they were very yeah. curious so we discovered about like for example plant um, plantain um and and you know I would tell them the story how it worked and everything and and it was really cool because um at some point I got to see how much they absorbed and how much they learned without even knowing but yeah. once we were at a friend's place and she actually stepped on a bee so she got stung and yeah. and you know it really hurt and my kid it was I don't know maybe six at a time and he was like oh don't worry I'm gonna get some plantain for you and he, oh, he wow. you know he just chewed on it it was so cute he just chewed in it and and then he was like oh don't worry it's gonna be a poultice I'm gonna put it on your feet and oh, on wow. your foot and and you yeah. know it's gonna work and and his friend was like oh yeah no it doesn't hurt anymore and he was like yeah I know plantain is magic and I was just like <laughs> oh this is my goal is done <laughs> Yeah. proud proud mummy moment <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. um but yeah it, like everything you learn um they're going to absorb at the same time as well so that's great and and I'm like you I'm a, a lifetime learner I love learning new um new things um sometimes academics like um, plants but also crafting and everything I I love working with my hands so um and and yeah, it's exposed to all of that. You you know, they get to see it. Sometimes I don't really um, care so much. Like my eldest is not so much into plants, for, the, for example. We all have our, you know, preferences and it's okay. Mm -hmm. But just to be exposed to all of that and just to know that you can learn from everything. And, you know, there's no limit. You don't have to. It's not mm. because you've you've only studied a subject that you're going to be an expert in that subject and you can't learn anything in else yeah, yeah. I studied fashion textiles you know and it's definitely not the most part of my life today so <laughs> yeah just, no I know it's just I think I think that's the beauty of homeschooling as well is it's t it benefits the parents as well doesn't it I was just listening to you yeah. and I was like I was like you get to share this like amazing journey with your children rather than them you know sort of going off and 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 just you know the school is separate and it's like it I don't know, it, well children have this amazing natural curiosity don't they and I think it is something that we tend to 
to generally for most people lose a little bit as we get older and a bit set in our ways um I mean, obviously, there's exceptions to that, <laughs> and we're probably we're probably both of both of us an exception to that. But um, it that's something magical about being around children as well, isn't it? Is like you know embracing them and like the amazing like gifts that they can share with you as well, um, and realizing that it is this two way kind of conversation and experience. Yeah, it makes you realize that there's not a teacher and a student. Yeah. That we're equal. We learn yeah. at the same, you know, we learn different things and but we're gonna benefit each other. It's gonna be yeah. a mutual learning experience. Yeah. And and that changes the entire paradigm of yeah. learning, I think. Yeah. And and if you think about it like we do learn best when um so things actually stick better if you teach someone else's yeah. so if you learn something um you know sometimes you will forget about it after a while but if you teach someone else like if you tell them oh this is how it works it's it's more likely to stick you know yeah. you're more yeah. likely to remember so when you when i do that with my kids you know i know those um learning are gonna be more impregnated in me but my kids also do that when they read something you know in a magazine or like they've heard a podcast on like some very peculiar subject sometimes <laughs> and and they're going to tell me and it's like a very curious fact or anything you know i'm going to be oh wow i never heard of that and and that's going to stick to them as well because they, they're so happy and excited to you know tell you about that they're actually sharing that knowledge and it's going to help them. So it's yeah. a good, we all win in that situation. We all learn something and we all, you know, get more knowledge and it's great. Yeah, I, lo I, the, I loved what you just said then about like this lack of hierarchy, because I think that's something as well that like you see more in nature. I mean, obviously, you know, you do have like sort of predators and things like this, but there's not, there's not this sort of like, societal hierarchy that we've got where we we sort of give more importance to certain people than other people and I think it's it yeah there's so there's so much that we can benefit from by just sort of taking a step outside that paradigm isn't there and just having this more you know mutual sharing of of wisdom and experience um rather than sort of imbuing someone with like this like yeah. you're 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 the expert and everything you say is absolutely right it sort of closes off the conversation and and the beautiful space for creativity and co-creation that that really sort of education and, and searching of wisdom should should be yeah and and when you take the time to to listen to to you know what they have to say to the kids or um to the students quite often because they they they're not so much um you know into the subject they're going to think out of the box as well they're going to come up with ideas yeah. that yeah. you know they might be completely outside what you were thinking because they're not so much into that they yeah. have like a high view and that's going to make connections with other subjects and yeah. and it's very interesting and and that sparks creativity for sure yeah. you definitely you go like oh yeah yeah that's that's interesting i never thought of that <laughs> yeah. or like sometimes you're like oh that's just weird but yeah why not <laughs> yeah. yeah i love that i just um <laughs> I just think that there's so much power in that, isn't there, of this, like, I was thinking of the word, like, listening, and, and but it, it's more than listening, it's like, you know, it's this sort of, it's active engagement and listening and, and co-creation and realising that, you know, sometimes, like, people outside of your immediate sort of specialist subject actually yeah. can can be the ones that go well why don't you look at it from this point of view and then you go oh wow okay yeah, I had never considered that but actually um it makes all the difference and I mean that's something I've I've talked about in the past and in relation to like um how artists and creatives can actually be valuable to sort of science and scientists because we have a different way of like kind of viewing the world and and visioning and actually it can like you said be the spark that just like they go wow okay actually and then they run with it with their skills and specialism and and it's uh, amazing what what co-creation can can come about 
Yeah, it's it's about giving value to every voices and not just to the so-called expert. Like and and yeah. I think I think it's true for everyone, but I think well I know in France quite often kids are like not very appreciated for that yeah. kind of value. We just think, oh, they're just kids, you know, it's they can't know. Well, yeah. sometimes they do surprise you and they know yeah. much better than you. You know, it's like you know, yeah. it's important to to kind of reassess and think, well, no, we all have our own values and they might know what you know, but they know other things and yeah. they're open to other, you know, kind of knowledge that you might not be. So yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. No, that's that's fascinating. I I am. Like, I, um, I realise that we're probably getting, getting close to an hour, and I need to sort of look to to wrap up. And I, but I feel like I, I'm definitely going to have to come back and do another episode with you at some point because I feel like there's there's so much we more that we can talk about about what you do um in your business and um what you offer to people. But we'll just touch on that briefly um because you you have create you are creating a beautiful community for people people um and so if you want to talk a little bit about more about that um yes that'd be lovely yeah. um so well actually um like about a year ago I was kind of thinking okay I'm doing all of that for myself for my family and um and this is great um and I get asked a lot of questions with my friends with my family and you know I'm happy I've always been happy to pass on the knowledge it's something that is very important for me um knowledge is supposed to be shared and not you know, kept yeah. um <clears throat> there's no there's no good in that for me anyway um and I was thinking okay how can I actually impact and how can I help others like in a more you know mainstream ways rather than just the people that know me um, and I came up with that membership idea. Um, I was thinking, okay, well, maybe I could pass on all the tips and things that I've collected and all the you know recipes I've created and um, to a more a wider audience of people like in a membership. Um, so that's how the idea um, was like kind of came together. And um, so, yeah, I started to lay the first bricks of that, created a membership for women. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, aiming specifically at women because I do believe that we are creative and, you know, um, not saying that men aren't, but I do believe that we kind of um, embrace changes um, yeah. a little bit easy, <laughs> easy. Um, so, I was thinking, okay, and I can relate more to women and what they experience as well. So I think I can help better, like understanding what they're going through yeah. and how it could change things. Um, and yeah, so basically my membership is helping women who feel, you know, kind of very busy and they don't have much time, but they would like to embrace a more natural and sustainable lifestyle. Um, they quite often they've taken a few steps already um but just they just lack of inspiration for a lot of things and you know they feel like you know you don't have time to look for yeah. all those alternative solutions yeah. so and this you're, is where you're I... creating a shortcut for them because that is the yeah. challenge isn't it it's you know there's, there's a lot of information out there but it's sometimes you don't even know the question to ask to go and and find the information so yeah. having someone who's kind of taken that journey already and can say well yeah let you know the, <laughs> this is a lot of the information that can can more than get you started and can take you a good long way along the road and and I'm giving you know you the benefit of all of the hours and weeks and years of of research and yeah. experimentation and yeah, a, a trial plan. and error yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and jumping you to to the to the end result um is just yeah yeah so yeah it's definitely a shortcut but it's also um the kind of okay we don't have to do it all in one go because yeah. that can be the trickiest part and i kind in the membership i do focus on like one pain point and we address that yeah. And then we move on. We might move on, you know, um, to a new one, or we might stay deeper in that subject. Or, yeah. but we don't try to do everything at once. And yeah. that's a big. I think it's a big thing because yeah, it's huge. not overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. Is I think it's really important because I think so many people 
they want to make changes don't they they you know and they they sort of then get stuck in this inertia of they're like well you know it means I've you know if I want to eat healthy I need to grow my own vegetables as well as like, you know cook all my own meals and they're like I just haven't got time to do that and yeah it's like you know if you can find that like first step for them to take and and help them with that process um I mean even like we talked earlier about eating seasonal foods and that you you've mentioned that, that you share your recipes and things um for I guess for eating more seasonally as well yeah Yeah, absolutely. That's that's exactly it. And and I I think also in the membership, what I do is um, it's not a one pass fits all. So we so we are going to touch base on like things like eating locally. But what is going to work for you might not work for someone else. And you might consider you know growing your own vegetables, but like a lot of people, it's not even an option, and they're not even interested in in that. And that is okay. You know we. Yeah. We don't have all the same interests. And, and as we were saying earlier on, it's a community thing. So if you're not interested in that, there are other options that are going to work for you. So it's kind of finding you know, different levels of how you can do changes that are going to work for you. And they're going to stick to you because it's easy. It's, you mm -hmm. know, something you can do effortless, effortlessly. And, and yeah, so... It's it's great. I I really enjoy that, um, and I can see um, and read like um, you know people making progress and going through a life that is um, I think more sustainable and mindful of of the livings, like yeah. generally of nature and everything. So that's yeah. very encouraging, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, and and I think like you said, the thing is, it's like you're you're focusing on women, but the and the ripple effect of that is, you know, their family, whether they've got children, partners, you know, their wider family, friends, even like you know, they it it just has this this beautiful ripple out, um, and I think that's the power of of working with women in that way as well. Is is they quite often. you know unintentionally sometimes the center of, of bigger communities as well yeah. aren't they yeah yeah absolutely they will you know infuse the changes in the family sometimes it can be a bit tricky you know I do get that feedback yeah. um, from some people going like ah there is so much resistance in the house yeah. <laughs> so that is ha happening it is true and I do try to help with that as well um, yeah but yeah I do strongly believe that women are you know the center of a lot of um, decisions and you know if they do take actions to change things then the rest of the household is probably going to follow yeah and it, well that's it's really nice that you mentioned that there's resistance because <laughs> because there is you know that's a that's a fact of life is that sometimes you know we're in relationships and we have families and and like I mean you mentioned your children they have their own interests and things that specifically interest them more than others and you know and so having someone who can support you through that as well um and find help you find ways to to still sort of make the changes that you you feel drawn to and you want to make but in a way that you know you can work with, with the resistance in in your family yeah. rather than you know ending up sort of going uh, you know yeah. hitting heads and, against each other and and, and, and giving up yeah. yeah well the community I think is very important for that and that is a big part of the membership it's like we all together going through that journey and it's not always easy so together we can celebrate wins even if the tiny ones but you know it's nice to have someone that gets you back and understand and appreciate the effort you do and and yeah I do I do think that A lot of us, they don't have that kind of support at, at home. Um, so yeah. being here for each other is is definitely a big part of it. Um, it's kind of having the tools and um, and feel equipped, inspired, but also being in, in a journey, not on your own. You, yeah. you, you've got people behind you. Yeah. You know, you support it. Yeah, and it, I think that there is so much need for that and it's, I don't, I don't want to say it's underestimated but it, it kind of is it's like you know we are it is a journey like we, we've said that quite a few times and you know if you imagine sort of you're a boat you know you're going to get blown off course and you know but when you have a community and a sort of membership like you're saying that 
is there to support you they can help you say oh hang on you know like you wanted to do this and like how do we help you come back onto the course you wanted to take um and, and keep moving in the direction that you that feels right for you and I think yeah we we all need that more and more I think with with how busy lives are in society and the demands on our time um to yeah. be able to stay true to to what we're trying to achieve and the social pressure as well because you know with the kids especially yeah um you know when they turn into teenagers and you know they have social pressures so there are setbacks and there are things you're not going to be able to do as you wished because they're going to be resistance or they're going to be other things and yeah. and it's okay it's it's also absolutely okay and it's okay to just you know just say ah you know oh, i can't I, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. There's so much resistance. Yeah. It's okay to just, you know, be ne negative as well and, and just yeah. get it out. <laughs> and then and then you can take it further and then you can yeah. move move forward. Uh, it's good to have some people that are just there for you. And Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love that. I think it's, it's something that you've said quite a lot of times, but it's that it's okay. It's okay to, to you know, to stumble, to not do things perfectly to not do everything it's okay and I think that's a really strong message to take away from this conversation is just it's okay and everything that that means um but I will include in the show notes um all of your links so people can find you and um, they can find your community um I know you've you did actually have a, a podcast of your own as as well so we'll, we'll put that's in French so um yes if if there are people who who French is is a language that they speak they can also um look at look at that aspect of of your offerings for them as well and I think you're you're we've got a booklet that we're going to yes, put together right. um which will be available for people as well so I'll have the link for that um yeah but, I just wanted to yeah. just uh, give a quick info about and that actually yeah, um perfect. just to let you know well let your audience know what, what it's about I um I've just put a, together a, um, a booklet with some simple nature-based activities for for them to be able to do with kids um so, well actually um I was um asking one of my members to read it and, and ask and tell me what she was thinking she was like oh no I don't have kids but you know I can do that I'm <laughs> <laughs> I love these activities so there's no limit you don't have to do them with your kids but um it's a great way to really connect around nature with them and to you know kind of work around that and and go outside and take things inside and, and yeah, you know peaceful. so yeah I'm hoping that um your yeah, people no, are gonna like it no it'd be lovely I'm really and um and like you say it's like sometimes <laughs> we need to do it with our own inner child don't we like yeah, absolutely you know, take take that inner child out there and and remind them about like the benefit the beauty of of childhood and that childhood curiosity and intuition and, and ability to connect with the world around us so I love that and um I'm glad that we have that to share so um just to wrap up I don't know if there's anything else that you I know we've covered a lot but if there's anything else you sort of feel that you'd like to to share before we say our goodbyes today well I wanted I just wanted to talk briefly um i have also a free community on facebook okay. a free group so if that is some interest to some of you then you can find me on striving together women's circle the, the real title but yeah we'll, we'll have the link in the, the show notes for yeah. everyone as well and and it's a great place to again find um some information but also just support each other and, and be there so I would be happy to, you know, welcome you there if you if you wanted oh, to. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, thank you so much for all of your time today. It's been uh, just been lovely. And like I said, I'm going to have to come back and <laughs> definitely speak to you again. Please do. Because I know yeah. there's, there's so much more that we could talk about. But we've we've had a lovely journey today. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope everyone goes and looks you up as well, because I think you have a lot to offer. Well, thank you for, very much for having me and, and taking the time to, you know, have you, like that conversation, that beautiful conversation together. It was great. 
Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.